So I want to make sure we've got it recorded. Yeah. Um, hey, there they are. So excited you guys are here. They look ready. Woohoo. <laughs> like the excitement in the background. Right? Oh yeah, headphones on, ready to rock. Ms. Martinez, that's, oh, that's third grade. That's third grade? Wow, rock on third grade. <laughs> third graders, we know you can do this because I teach third grade and I use Minecraft in my classroom. So I'm so excited for you to be able to do this as well. One minute, one minute. <clears throat> Yay. Mr. Hawkins, I think it's time. Excellent. Good morning. We are so happy you guys are here this morning. We're excited to um, come with you to Minecraft today and just share some of the things that we know and some things that we do in our classroom with Minecraft. Um, and just like any tool, you know, um, we first have to learn how to use that tool. Um, a lot of you probably play Minecraft or have at least experience with Minecraft. Um, and so we're going to kind of hopefully shift your thinking just a little bit and see uh, how you can use it um, in your classroom. And, you know, we just want to say thank you to all the teachers that are joining us today. I know that sometimes jumping into something new can be uh, scary, um, but we want this to be exciting and uh, for you guys to be able to um, see some of the potential that Minecraft has to offer. So welcome. We're so glad you guys are here today. <clears throat> Um, teachers, so um, what we'd like you to do is if you have any questions, make sure you type those in the chat. Um, if uh, you need some help with with something, also put that in the chat. And uh, Mrs. Dunbar and myself will be monitoring the chat, so we'll get back to you um, and just make sure that you guys are, are on board with us and um, up to speed. So uh, I just first of all just want to say again, welcome. Uh, my name is Randy Hawkins. Uh, my students call me Mr. Hawkins. Uh, I teach third grade. I'm coming to you today from uh, Boise, Idaho. Um, I've been using Minecraft in my classroom for uh, probably the past eight years. Um, sometimes it seems longer than that, sometimes not so much, but um, ever since I started, you know, in the beginning it was definitely scary, um, but I've just seen so much potential and um, given the students the opportunity to share what they've learned using Minecraft. And so I, I brought some examples um, today you know, um, the students uh, we just recently learned about Veterans Day, and so students researched Veterans Day, and then they were able to build a symbol that they felt like represented Veterans Day, and then also write a paragraph about it. And I don't know about you, but uh, typically when I say we're going to write, my students aren't too excited, but when we incorporate Minecraft in there, they usually don't complain. So uh, I enjoy using Minecraft in all subject areas, and I think that if you look um, you will you will also see the potential um, for this as well. So again, Randy Hawkins, teach third grade. 
I'm ready to, to join in with you today and, and just have some fun. So I'm going to turn it over to Tammy for just a second. Hi, I'm Tammy Dunbar. I'm coming to you from Manteca, California, 75 miles east of San Francisco. I've been teaching for 21 years and with Minecraft, not quite as long as Randy, but pretty close. You can see I got it right here in my classroom. I'm at an online academy. So we are we are using Minecraft not every day, but we use it uh, to spice up things, to enhance things, and to increase uh, knowledge. You can see all the bona fides there. And if Mr. Hawkins will be so kind as to flip to the next screen, I will show you a couple of examples of how we use Minecraft in our fifth grade class here in Manteca. So you can see, yeah, if you click on the video, thanks. When we were brick and mortar, we would always do uh, posters for, um, for our class rules. And then we would have students, I would have students go into Minecraft and recreate their posters in Minecraft, which was always a fun exercise. Uh, we do tech challenges in my class. And you can see over on the right-hand side, again, when we were a brick and mortar, um, students in their table group teams would craft their Minecraft dream school. This really taught them how to collaborate together and work together in Minecraft and be very respectful of each other. And then of course, you gotta present them. So we would put them up on the screen and allow students to present to the class what they had come up with. At the bottom, you can see uh, we did some research on our state, California, and students would, uh, this one is Yosemite Falls and Yosemite National Park. So what she did is she took a picture of Yosemite National Falls and then she recreated that falls in Minecraft. So lots of ways that you can use Minecraft to spice up. Uh, we read The Lemonade War, which is a big fifth grade book. And then students at the end, after writing their, their uh, responses and taking the quiz, got to create their own lemonade stand in Minecraft. So just a couple of ideas of how you can use Minecraft in your class, which is pretty exciting. But what I wanted to do first, and if Mr. Hawkins will change the slide, I wanted to talk about Minecraft mavens. Maven, Mrs. Dunbar, you're a teacher and you're giving us a hard word. I've never heard of the word maven. If you flip the slide, Mr. Hawkins, you will see, we're gonna talk about what is a maven, and I'm sure there are some in the classes. A maven is someone who is incredibly skilled at what they do. They have special secret knowledge. They just seem to be wizards at what they do, synonyms, words that mean the same as maven are hotshot, superstar, virtuoso, whiz, expert, champion, ace, genius. So I will bet that right now in your classrooms, there are some Minecraft mavens. Some of you who like, oh man, I could teach some of my classmates how to use Minecraft. So if you go ahead and flip the slide for me, if you would, Mr. Hawkins. So if you follow, if you have these skills, Go ahead and click for me. If you have these skills, if you're comfortable opening up Minecraft, creating a world and moving around in it, if you know how to access your inventory in Minecraft and build things, if you know the secret way to put codes in to change night to day and day to night or make it stop raining, and if you're very enthusiastic about sharing that knowledge with your classmates, then you are a Minecraft maven. So go ahead and click it for me, Mr. Hawkins. And right now, if you consider yourself a Minecraft maven, raise your hand right now in your classroom. Raise it up really super high because you are the ones who are going to be helping your fellow students who are not as comfortable. And you might even get to help your teacher, which is really cool. Okay, so teachers, look around in your classroom and look at those students whose hands are up high right now. Those are the kids you want to go to and say, how do I turn night into day again? How do I do this again? Make them your Minecraft maven so they can also circulate around the classroom when you are to make sure the kids who need a little extra help have that help. So let's hear it for the Minecraft mavens. You may put your hands down. Awesome. Hopefully we've identified them. Okay, next slide, if you would, thank you. Now, another thing, the privilege of being able to be in Minecraft, my friends, is that you gotta follow rules of digital citizenship. Digital meaning online, which is where Minecraft lives. And citizenship means thinking about other people first, being good citizens. So let's flip the next slide and see what that's all about. <clears throat> whether you're on a computer or whether you're in person with people, it's always important, as your teachers have told you, to show kindness and respect for other people. Right In my class, we've been talking about being in someone else's shoes and looking at them uh, from their perspective, having some empathy, and it's the same thing when you're online in Minecraft. It's important to be mindful, that means keeping in your mind, of other people's work and their feelings, because we know if we work together in Minecraft, if we're building side by side with someone, we don't want to mess up what they're doing. Like, if you were in Minecraft with a partner, would you want them to mess with something you'd already built, to change it, to blow it up? you would feel terrible. 
And so that kind of empathy, those kinds of feelings, right? Treat other people the way you want them to treat you. That's what we have to keep in mind when we're working together in Minecraft. So think about how you like to be treated online and in game and making good decisions that makes us good digital citizens. Now on the next slide, I have this really interesting picture of someone who's been working really hard in Minecraft and then someone came along in the world and blew it up. Now, right now, I want you to take just like a few seconds and think, would it be kind to blow up someone else's work in a Minecraft world? Yeah, not very kind. Okay. It would be much kinder if you wanted to change it or had suggestions to talk to them. And there are ways to talk to students, especially when you're in classroom with them. But if you're not, if you're in an online academy like us, you can still use chat in Minecraft. So think about that before you, before you do something. I guess that's kind of the rule in everybody's classroom, right? Think before you act. Uh, would you go to the next slide, please? So how do we best work together? And I know that somewhere in your classroom, you have rules up on the wall. And so these are kind of, and I will bet these rules sound a lot like your rules. If someone asks for help, give it, especially my Minecraft mavens. If someone says, oh my gosh, I have no idea how to access this inventory. I can't find a fence. Help them. If they ask for help, if they're telling you they need you, help them. That's rule number one. And if someone asks you to stop doing something, stop it, right? Perfectly simple. If you're working with a group, talk to each other, right? If you're trying to collaborate on something, which eventually you'll get to in Minecraft, you got to talk to each other about how you're going to do things. And if you have a great idea, you got to share it with people, right? And, oh, this one's huge. This was always a big sign in my classroom. If you need help, ask someone. Ask and ask someone near you first. Some teachers say, ask three before me. So it's like if someone's near you, say, oh, hey, how do you do this? Or do you know how to do that? And if no one knows, then you raise that quiet hand and wait for your teacher or one of those mavens to come over and help you. And, you know, you can still do other things while you're waiting to find out that answer. So really, we're calling this Minecraft manners because it really is a privilege for your teachers to allow you to use this in your class. And I think you all are going to find that it is an incredibly powerful tool, not used every day and all the time. But when you use it in the right way, it can open up a world of learning and excitement for students and engagement. So. Those are the ground rules for your Minecraft manners and digital citizenship. So now I think we have, uh, oh, I think we have a creeper. Do we have a creeper? Oh, our objectives. Thank you. Yes, let's go ahead and go to the objectives because it's important to know what we're doing today. So we are going to be able to use Minecraft to share our learning with our teachers. So we're actually going to create something today and you're going to show it to your classmates and to your teachers. So you're going to be able to showcase what you've created. You can clearly express yourself and share your content in Minecraft. You're, you're able to navigate through Minecraft because Mr. Hawkins is going to walk you through steps of what you need to do to get into the game, to move around the game. And you can collaborate with your fellow students with kindness and empathy in a physical, in your classroom, and in Minecraft. Okay, so these are the important things to remember. And teachers, don't forget, you've got those mavens in your classroom. Hopefully you wrote down the names or you've got it in your head. Those are the ones who are going to help you help other students. All right, we know our objectives for today. And Mr. Hawkins, I think, yeah, there you go. What's that? What is that, Mr. Hawkins? That's the creeper. Ooh. And he likes to come along and sometimes he interrupts our buildings. Um, you're probably not going to experience a creeper in Minecraft actually today. Um, but I know that you guys have seen a creeper before. And so we know that. Uh, so today we're going to use this creeper as your attention getter. Um, because you know what? When we see a creeper in Minecraft, he definitely gets our attention. Um, but, so you know, sometimes when we get in game, it's so exciting that we... Uh, we just keep working and we can't pull ourselves away from it. And so what we would uh, like to ask you guys today is that when you see this slide, when you hear that creeper hiss, that you stop what you're doing and give us back your attention, because that means that we need, have something we need to share with you. And um, if we're going to use Minecraft, you know, we need to be able to also pull ourselves away and come back to the classroom 
and participate as well. So anytime you see this Minecraft creeper, I want your hands off the keyboard. I want you paying attention because we have something to say to you. Um, we're not going to do that a lot, but we definitely want you to um, pull yourselves away and come back to us when that happens. Uh, your teachers will appreciate that, and so will we today. So see a creeper, stop what you're doing, pay attention. Excellent. I like to see that in the background. Some students already doing that, so thank you. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna get we're gonna get ready to get started. I'm gonna walk you through kind of making sure that you are able to um, create a world and get started in that world, and then also move around. Uh, raise your hand if you've ever played Minecraft on a computer before, because a computer is a little bit different than the Xbox or you know your personal devices and things like that. So, um, but it kind of same idea. So get those hands up high. I want to see played Minecraft before. All right, we got a few students I see in the background. Um, so that's exciting. And you know what? If you've never played before, that's why you're here, right? You're going to learn some new things today. Um, so I just want to, before we get into game, I want to share this with you because um, it's kind of, it's easier to see it here. I can kind of point some things out, but this is kind of what your screen's going to look like when you get in game today. Okay. Um, so when we refer to the crosshairs right here, um, this is a crosshair. This is where you're looking um, with your mouse. You can see the direction that you're looking in. You can also see that because I'm looking at this block right here, that it's highlighted. And so that's important to know too, because if I'm trying to place something down, wherever that block is highlighted, that's where the placement's gonna be. Um, but also, if you destroy something, or they call it mine something, that's what's gonna get mined right there, that block right there. So um, you can see the crosshairs and where I'm looking at, this is where the action is going to happen. This is where I'm either going to place a block or I'm going to destroy a block. Okay. Um, I also want you to pay attention to this down here because um, this is a good um, kind of uh, tool for you to utilize because when I see this, um, I can see which mouse click button I need to click on to place something, but I can also see which one that will mine something and you know what when i started playing minecraft uh, there were lots of times when i meant to place a block but i actually mined it and so that's going to happen a lot and that's okay we just rebuild and start over so um, you won't hopefully mine everything but just so you know that and then um q is to drop items and, and um, i don't use this a lot but sometimes we, we we just throw an item on the ground and, and that's the drop button um, the other thing that I want you to pay attention to is this hot bar down here. And the hot bar is um, all the items that you are ready to use. And to access this hot bar, it's your number keys on your keyboard. And so if I push the number one on my keyboard, then this is the item that I'm going to be, that's going to be in my hand. Okay, and so right now you can see that this um, flower right here is in my hand, and this is the third item. So that's key number three on my keyboard. And so um, there's one through nine here, so I can access um, any of these items just by pushing my number keys, and that will cycle through uh, these here. The other thing is, on your screen, when you log in, you're going to see these controls, which are important to use because uh, sometimes I forget, okay, how do I move forward? How do I move backwards? And so these, these are here um, on your keyboard um, for you to see those tools. And then spacebar to jump. Uh, if you push the space bar twice, it will actually make you fly. So I just want to make you aware of those controls on your keyboard because those are going to be um, important for us today. Okay, so moving on. Jumping ahead. So right now I'd like you to locate um, the W and S key on your keyboard. Can you see the W and S key on your keyboard? And if you can, can you just point to it? Uh, because you're going to need to use that. So find the W key, find the S key. And then um, the A and D key um, kind of move you left and right. And so I don't use that as much, and I'll explain that once we get in game. But if you think about, um, if you stood up right now and you shifted to the left, that's essential. You're still facing the same direction, but you're just shifting to the left. Uh, same thing with the right. You're just shifting to the right. Okay, so um, that doesn't the A and the D key do not turn you. All right, so keep that in mind that the A and D key do not turn you. Uh, was able everybody able to find those keys on their keyboard? Did you find them all? Pretty easy, right? Okay, we're gonna jump forward. Uh, this is another important one, the escape key. And so you can see the escape key right up here on the top. And the escape key is used when we're ready to pause our game. 
uh, maybe to get out of our game. So it's important that you can find that escape key as well, because that will allow us to save um, your work once we are done. OK, so point is everybody, everybody find the escape key. Let's see. I see. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a couple students that are pointing out. Good job, you guys. OK, so the last key that we're really going to focus on is the space bar. And so it's the big bar at the bottom of your keyboard. You're going to use that space bar um, because when you're building in Minecraft, if you go higher than two blocks, you have to fly to get that to happen. And so if you push the space bar two times, kind of quickly, then that will um, get you up in the air to fly. Um, if you keep holding it down, you'll go way high up in the air, and that's really difficult to build when you're way up there. So uh, we have to come back down. So if you can find the shift key, because right here it says shift is sneak, but once you start flying, shift becomes that key that brings you back down slowly. So everybody find the shift key. Um, it should be down close to the bottom near the space bar. Make sure you can uh, find that shift key on your keyboard because you're going to need to utilize it today as well. OK, find those keys. All right, looks like about ready to jump into the game then. So raise your hand if you're ready to get started. Raise your hand if you're ready to get started into Minecraft working. Um, me too. Let's do it. So um, I saw that um, some of you, had, I've already opened up Minecraft and you have it on your screen, which is great. But if you haven't located Minecraft yet, uh, make sure you're going to do that now. And so uh, for me on my computer, if I search for Minecraft, that app will pop right up. You guys might have it already there and you can see it. Um, but find that Minecraft app and click on it so it'll open up for you. And then um, if you are struggling with this and you can't find it, uh, make sure you raise your hand and one of those Minecraft mavens will hopefully come over and help you out. So it's kind of the idea of having those mavens because there's a lot of students out there. Um, then if you have to sign in, make sure you sign in. Uh, for me, I just have to put in my, my email, username and password, and then I'm into Minecraft. So um, anybody struggling with locating that? Uh, we got some students there. Looks like most of them are in. All right. So once we get into Minecraft, we're going to get to this main screen, and then we're going to stop because we're going to change change a couple settings here um, just to help your your teachers out and your classmates out. So get to this main screen, and then don't go any farther, okay? Because we're going to change some things here. I'm going to go live into the game at this point, uh, which means I'm going to turn off my camera because if I don't then uh, things start to get a little weird. I will leave my uh, microphone on, um, but I'm going to turn my camera off so that way um, you guys won't will be able to see this. Okay, so here's the main screen of Minecraft. We're going to click on this settings button. Okay, so find that settings button. And we're going to click on it. We're going to open up some settings that we're going to adjust uh, really briefly, and then we're going to get right into the game. Okay, so the settings is the third one down. We're going to click that settings and it's going to open up this piece right here. OK, so once we're in settings on the left side, we're going to come over here. And we're going to scroll down using the scroll bar and we're just going to find the audio button. OK, because you know what, students, I know you love the Minecraft sounds, but as a teacher, I could do without it. So, <laughs> and, and if you have a lot of students in the classroom and everybody has their sound on, um, then it can be a problem. So if you have headphones, it's a little bit different. But if you don't, we really want to help our teachers out because remember, we really want them using Minecraft in our classroom. And so let's help them out. So we're going to click on the audio button. And then we're just going to grab this slider. It's probably up here. We're going to just grab that slider right there. We're just going to drag it all the way down to zero. Uh, this is really going to help out your teachers. And you know what? You can pretend like you hear Minecraft in your head, and I think you guys will be just fine. So when you're in the classroom, this is definitely um, useful, and your teachers will definitely appreciate it. So um, audio, and then just grab that slider and drag it all the way down to zero to really just turn that sound down and help your teachers out. OK, give me a thumbs up if you got that. Teachers, you can help out. You can give us a, ooh, that class. This is uh, Martina's class. Your class is ready to go. And it looks like Miss Santiago's class is getting there. So I appreciate that. And then all the other teachers, if you're on there, if you could click a little like thumbs up, 
on the chat section. Let us know that you're good as well. Yeah, I just um, saw a thumbs up from Ms. Santiago's class. So, yeah, yay. Perfect. <laughs> Thank and you, also, yep, we got a big yeah. thumbs up. All right. All right. Okay. So we're so settings are adjusted. That's that's it in settings. So up at the top, we're gonna go back to the the arrow up at the top of the settings, and we're gonna click back. We're gonna click that arrow right up in the top left corner. We get back to the main screen because now it's time for us to get into world. Okay. Yay. Mrs. Damon's class also gave us a thumbs up, by the way. So yay. yeah. Perfect. All right. Hopefully everyone else is there as well. Uh, try to keep those. <laughs> pieces to a minimum so we can get started, but also um, have some peace and, and be able to concentrate today. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click play, all right, because we're ready to play. So let's click the big play button on your home screen. Woohoo, woohoo. I know, so exciting, right? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do once we click play is gonna bring us to this um, screen right here. We're gonna click on the view library because we're going to just check out a, a world in the library today. So it's on the right hand side, the view library over there. And then once we get into there, we're going to jump into the starter, the starter worlds right here. OK, so we're going to click on the starter worlds here. And then biomes is our next one. We're going to click on biomes. Biomes? Didn't we study biomes yeah. in class? I know, right? Those are pretty cool. cool science stuff. And then the, from here, we're going to just click this blocks of grass. And blocks of grass is a great beginner world um, because there are no obstacles in the way. You know, it's not an exploring world, but it's a great world for building. And so whenever I have my students uh, building things for me, I always use this blocks of world of uh, blocks of grass world because it's just flat and uh, there's nothing that gets in the way and you can just build. So we're going to choose the blocks of grass and then we're going to go ahead and create that world. So you're going to click the create world button in the top right. So create that world, click it and it's going to start your world. So make sure um, if you're struggling with this, raise your hand and Mavens, make sure you, you jump up and, and help these students out quietly. Um, as long as your teacher approves it, but um, that's something I do in my classroom is if a student is, is struggling, we want to be able, you know, we want to help them out because um, that's just the right thing to do. So if a student is struggling, please raise your hand. And um, if you notice somebody struggling, please, please, please help them out. All right, so create world. Hopefully I didn't hit a roadblock. Oh, there we go. I think there are too many of us trying to create a world right now, so it's uh, <laughs> taking some time. Minecraft's like, wait a second. OK, all right, so from here, you are in the world. This is a Minecraft world, so if you've never been in a Minecraft world, here it is. This is what it looks like. Most of them are a little more exciting, but this one is just, like I said, blocks of grass. So if you grab your mouse with one hand, or you, if you don't have a mouse, you use your trackpad, and so one hand is on your trackpad and one hand is on your W kind of up in that area. So if I use my trackpad and I just move it side to side, you can see that I'm looking around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so I can look down at the ground and I can look up at the sky. So do these things with me. And you hopefully can see your crosshairs the whole time. And so you can see. I'm looking up at the sky, looking down at the ground. So we sideways. can change our point of view? Yeah, well, yeah, we can. And so nice. just looking around and you can see right now that if I just use my mouse, it's just like turning your head. So if you just turn your head in like actual physical head in the classroom, that's kind of like moving your trackpad or your mouse side to side. OK, up, down. So you just get a good look. We haven't moved anywhere yet. Um, but I feel like we're kind of ready to start moving. So as we're looking around, let's go ahead and push W, okay? And let's just start moving through this world. Oh, look, there's a cute little chicken. We're moving through, <laughs> and if I if I move my mouse as I'm moving, that kind of steers me, all right? That kind of controls the direction that I'm moving. I don't have to really use 
the A or the D to move left and right. I just need to steer. Like the mouse is like your steering wheel. But I know, raise your hand if you've ever driven a car before. Yeah, I didn't think so. So, but it kind of, kind of, you've seen your parents do it, right? And so, you know that uh, you steer, um, move around and steering. Then Mr. Hawkins. Yeah. Mr. Hawkins, Miss Miss Santiago's class is telling us that their devices are not letting them create a world. She's showing her right up there. Uh, ooh, a little too close. Take it back just a little bit. I can't. I'm just seeing a reflection. I think it's. Oh, they've got iPads. Okay. Yeah. Should Any idea there? Nice. There it is. Um, we're I'm, not seeing, to... I'm not seeing her in front of us, but on oh, the iPad. Like, we're unable to connect to the library. This can happen if your computer is offline or. Yeah, Susie, I'm reading it. I'm trying to read it anyway. Or maybe, um, Ms. Santiago, can you? are you allowed to come off mute and read it to us? I don't think she is, but. Oh. She's not. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Can we give her talking privileges? I don't know. We can. Who is that? Santiago? I think you Santiago. can, Ms. Demar. I can? Yeah, if you can click. I, that's okay. special. <laughs> can you yeah. hear me? Oh, yeah, we can totally hear you. Yes, it says we're unable to connect to the library. This can happen if your computer is offline or if access to the library catalog is blocked. I see Susie Tinker okay. is on. Uh, Susie or Mr. Hawkins, do you have any idea? Well, what district are you in, Miss Santiago? NEISD. NEIS. Got it. NEISD. We're in San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, Texas. Oh, Susie can't can you, come off. We need to get Susie off of. Okay. Me can too. you try instead of going to the library? Can you no. click Create World? I'm just trying to see if that'll if that will let you. Susie, can you come off mute now? The rest yeah. of you. Yeah, hear me. I can. Santiago. Um. Yeah. So I I um haven't heard about this from your district before because we've done some work there, but it might be that the library is actually blocked, which I can help the IT team out with. Um, but if you try to go and create um, a blocks of grass world not from the library. She's here. IT, IT's here. <laughs> I just tried it in that and I went, yes, I went into the templates and I was able to grab the blocks of glass. Oh. Okay, perfect. Hey. Let's yeah, do that. Yeah, if you can have all the students go to templates and create from there. Um, and I will work with you guys to make sure that we get library access for next time. Um, so, so okay. yeah, thank you. Thank you for helping thank troubleshoot, you. sir. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you, and Susie hey. Tinker, for being here. Let's talk about a Minecraft yeah. magnificent maven. Excellent. Yeah, and, and for the rest of you, thank you for also understanding that uh, we're going to run into these issues. So thank you for being patient as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, we're I think we're good with moving around, but let's try this. Let's try flying. So everyone on your keyboard, if you would double tap the space bar to fly, you can see that I'm now flying up in the air. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and my on the side, my um, controls, I'm going to land again. My controls show if I push the space bar two times, I start flying. Okay. And I can hold the space bar down to fly up. But when I get way up here, I can't, I can't build anything. Okay. So a couple of different things that I can do. If I want to come down slowly, I'm going to hold the shift key down. That's going to fly down. Um, but if I want to fall down fast, I just push the double space bar again fast and it will crash me back down to the ground. And thankfully, you know, you're not um, actually crashing to the ground, so but you can get down. So uh, fly up, double uh, tap, hold it Hang down. on, Mr. Hawkins, Ms. Damon's yes. class is saying they're also working on iPads. Could you help us with flying on iPads? Yeah, so on this, touch the screen. And let's see, what's the key for flying in there? Um, Miss Tammy, do you know how to? I do not because I don't use it on iPad. Is Susie still here? I, uh, I think once you touch the screen, that it will um, show up that you can fly. So 
Um, I know how to do it, Cortan says. Okay, Malia, can you type in what you do? Malia is one of my Minecraft mavens. <laughs> and Josiah, I should have known, and Leela. Oh yeah, I've got a bunch of mavens in my class. One of you can type it into chat for us. Let's see who does it the fastest. Ooh, who's gonna type it first? Challenges. Okay, so, oops, I have it. On the touch screen, you double tap yep. the jump button. So it's in. So it's the in the middle of the controls. And so when you touch the touch screen, you'll see the up arrow, down arrow. Let me see if I can get a. Our Haven this. says press the square on the right two times, and you will see it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just pull my Google search over because here you go. And once you touch the iPad, you'll see the controls, and in the middle is your um, your button for flying. Okay, does that help out? Hopefully, that helps out. Yeah, let us know, Ms. Ms. Uh, Damon, if that helped. Okay, so hopefully everyone's able to at least move around. You can move around. Um, so again, on the iPads, if you touch the screen. Um, pops up some arrows for you to push, so you're just directionally using those. All right. Yes, Ms. Damon says it worked. Thank you. Excellent. You now I had that question once in my classroom, and I and I had to play with it to figure it out. But we'll all get there. Okay, so let's um let's access some materials so we can actually start um, building. So you can see when I look at the ground that that block of grass right there is highlighted. It has that black highlight around it. And you'll also see in the bottom um, right corner that my um, mouse says, if I click, I'm going to mine a, a hole. OK, and so if I push that button, I just I just mine a hole in the blocks of grass, um, but I don't have anything to fill it with. And so you can see down at the bottom of my screen, my hotbar is empty. There's nothing there. And so I want to get some things into my hotbar. So if I push E, on the keyboard and E stands for everything. And so when we're playing in Minecraft in uh, creative mode, which is what we're in, if we push the E button on our keyboard, we get um, everything that's available what? in Minecraft to build with. And so you can see here, there's just a few blocks, but if I click on one of these side icons over here, I get a lot more blocks that I can look at. And if it has a plus by it, if I click the plus, I get even more blocks. And so you can see that this planks right here, you can see originally it would just look like that, but when I click the plus sign, I get all of these different kinds of planks of planks of wood. Okay. So wow. um, and, and then also in Minecraft, when you're building, you know, you don't actually have to build um, you know, with materials that the thing would actually be made out of. Um, you, you just find cool things that, that look cool and you can build with those okay so keep that in mind as we're playing around with it but let's grab um this oak wood planks right here or you, you can grab any of them i don't care but if i click on it with my um mouse my uh left click on my mouse then it puts it in my hand and you can see it's kind of connected to my mouse and if i drag it down to my hot bar and pick a slot I'm just going to pick one and I click again, it will drop all of those planks into my hotbar. OK, so one more time, if you click. Click the planks. Just click it once. You don't have to hold it down or anything. If you just click it, it will attach it basically to your cursor. And now you can move it down to your hotbar and click to drop it. Um, now you can now you see I have two planks of grass in there. Or, sorry, wood planks in there. I don't I don't need to. So if I click it again, I can just drag it up here and click to drop it and it will go away. OK, so. So far I have some oak wood planks. I'm going to scroll down using it because there's a lot more materials here. I'm going to oh. scroll down and look for mm -hmm. something um, that might have a little more color to it. And so one of the things um is wool and that's probably in not in this one but we'll do concrete since it's it also has many colors 
So if I click mm -hmm. the plus on concrete, I get all these colors that I can build with. And so I'm going to grab some red and some yellow. So I like those colors. I'm going to put them in my hot bar. So I have a few things in my hot bar. Um, I found the wool too, so there's different options. But just grab a few things and put them in your hot bar. Um, if you like the color, grab it and move it into your hot bar. You don't have to fill it up, um, but um, you can um, put as much in there as you want. So those are just some items. Uh, you can also see over here that there are other items as well. These aren't really for building, but they're more tools that you can use in Minecraft, which we're not going to need today, but um, we're going to just start with the construction items because we're going to build something. Okay, does everybody have something in their hot bar that they can build with? At least one thing. Yeah, okay, I see some thumbs up. Nice. All right, so I'm done grabbing materials. I'm going to click the X in the right top right corner to get out of my inventory. Okay, and it's going to bring me back in the game. So I'm going to fill up my hole with this piece of wool just because. So now look at what happened in my bottom right corner with my mouse controls. Now I can see in the bottom that it says, hey, use this key on the mouse to place and use this one to mine. Well, I don't want to blow another hole in my world. So I'm <laughs> going to look in that hole and you can see that the, the um, where my um, crosshairs are pointing are right at the side of that grass block. And if I click, it's going to place that block right what? in that hole. Cool, right? Wow. All right, so now I won't fall in that hole later, which is good. Okay, so um, if I, I'm going to move over here. And so if I, again, remember crosshairs, look at the ground, and then just click to place. And sometimes, oops, you may accidentally break it, but it's okay to place it again. So now that I have one block placed, I have choices. I can place another block on the side, or if I look at the top of it, I can place a block on top. Okay, so I can place a block on the side, or on the top by look, moving my cross arrows to the top. Okay, this is kind of can be a slow process sometimes. Click again, click. And then I'm going to try to place another one. And then here. OK, it won't let me place a block here. Does anybody know why? Because I'm in the way. I can't place a block where I'm standing. So now I have to actually use my keys on my keyboard to move away a little bit um, to make space. All right. But what I really want to do is I want to go higher on my block wall here. Okay. Oh yeah, good job. <laughs> um, but I can't I can't place any more on top of my wall because I'm I'm too short. So the only way to place blocks up higher is to double tap on the space bar and to fly up in the air. Okay. So again, double tap on the space bar. And now I'm up in the air. Now I can place something on top of this one. Okay. So I can keep building up. I just have to keep flying up. Okay, higher and higher. If I place something I don't like it, I just look at it, look at the block I don't like, and I mine it. So that's that's placing and mining blocks. And then to get back down to the ground, double page, double tap the space bar or shift key. Okay. All right. Anything else that I need to address, Miss Dunbar? I think you have addressed everything, but we, we are curious. What happens when you mine one of those? Does it go back in your inventory? It just goes away. <laughs> because I'm in creative mode, it just breaks it into pieces and it goes away. If I was playing in survival, it's a whole different, right? It's oh, different, yeah. But in creative, it just breaks it and gets it out of the way. And the cool thing, and and a cool thing about creative, but also can uh, you know cause problems, is that when you accidentally mine it, if you, you only it only takes one hit to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, in survival, you have to hit it a couple times to get rid of it, but in creative, one hit and it breaks it. So just just be aware, and that you know one of the things about Minecraft is you're gonna break things. I still break things today. <laughs> I okay. even have tried to help my students fix the problem, end up breaking something on theirs. So. Uh, you know, you just understand that it happens. Um, it's going to happen. Um, 
it's it's part of Minecraft life, I guess. Is what I would say. Okay. Yeah, I also so, want to call out all the kids that I see getting up and the mavens who are helping yes, their classmates. I see those well, too, done. Awesome. <laughs> well done. Well done. That is cool. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna. I think that you guys are gonna get an opportunity to build now. And so. Yes. Um, what we're gonna we're, we're gonna so we've, we've played around with moving we've placed some blocks but now i want you to create something and so we are going to um have you guys create build something that represents you okay and i'll just give you an example that right here there's some pencils up here and i built pencils because i'm a teacher and i always need a pencil and so i built these pencils to represent me as a teacher um, you guys can build anything you want that re that you feel like represents you. Use as many blocks, as many colors, um, anything you want. But here's the thing. When you get done, we really want you to share. So build something that represents you. Be able to explain why it represents you. But now I just want to give you the opportunity to build. So take some time. Build something that represents you. Ms. Dunbar, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, uh, if you're in a smaller grade, you could even try to <laughs> spell out your name in blocks, right? Yeah. So you could do like, like for me, my first name is Tammy. So I could do, and the cool thing about Minecraft is I could build the T standing up or I could build it flat on the ground. So when I fly up and I look down, I see my name on the ground. So there are all kinds of different ways. And that's the great thing about Minecraft is it allows you to be creative and to come up with different ways to do things. If you're older grades, hey, three, four, five, build your pet, build your face. Um, it's holiday season. You could build something in that nature. Football, yeah, it's football season. I'm a basketball fan, so I might try to build a basketball. Harder to build basketballs, right? Circles in Minecraft when you're using blocks. <laughs> Yeah, I think you can do it though. I have students. So it looks like Haley's. She's one of mine. Things. Okay. Oh, okay. More iPad stuff. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Haley. We didn't, I don't <laughs> think we knew they were all on iPads. I thought most of them were on Chromebooks. So obviously we'll be adapting. So thank you, all of you from my Minecraft Mavens. I appreciate those tips. It does look like a, one of my students said what you built there in blue, Mr. Hawkins, looks like a DNA spiral. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, there's no blue here, but back in Minecraft. I got you. Yeah, yeah in Minecraft, I was, yeah. I was just going for, you know, some uh, different, <laughs> something different. So, so um, while your students are building, uh, if you, as teacher, have any questions, uh, feel free to come off mute or to type it into chat. We'll be happy to talk to you about it or come up with anything. Um, do we have any iPad tips? We don't use iPads in our district, so I don't. Um, I have a few. I, we, we don't use them anymore either. So it's mm -hmm. a couple years ago, all our iPads went away. So it's been a while since I've used that iPad, but um, I can answer those questions for sure. Um, the best that I can. <laughs> and, and this is true. Like I cannot build without a mouse, but my students have no issues building on the touch screen or using the trackpad. And so it's, you know, what what's easy for us or hard for us is, is definitely easier for mm -hmm. our students, so. Yeah, um, some of my students are saying in chat that they used to play on iPads. Yeah. And you can enter chat using T and enter. Oh, thanks, Sarah. So some of them are saying they find it easier. I know that we have touch screens in our district and I know some students use the mouse. I use the mouse. I'm I'm an old lady, but they just do everything on the screen, you know, and I'm it blows me away. Students are resilient, so they yes. will and especially, you know, talk about Minecraft, they're going to find a way to use it. So Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I I really like using the keyboard and the mouse in concert together. I think that's easier for me. I agree with Sarah. I find a keyboard easier. Okay, hopefully you guys are building some great things, big or small, uh, but you're starting to look at figuring out how to make that build happen, mm -hmm. get something going in your world where you are, um, you know, I mean, and students, be ready to share with your teachers. Show them the cool things that you can do with Minecraft. So. And uh, the creativity, yeah, the creativity always blows me away. Like my students built uh, dream schools 
And part of the dream schools was one of them built this really cool basketball court. Some of them built soccer fields, but you had to have netting. And it's like, what do you use in Minecraft for netting? And they use spider webs, which yeah. I thought was incredibly creative. So that's, that's another thing about Minecraft is it really helps you with some critical thinking skills because it's like, I really want to build this one thing, but how do I do that with these tools? So that's kind of a, that's really a good skill to have. Yeah, agreed. Oh, yes, there is such thing as Minecraft survival, but we're being very peaceful now. <laughs> oh, one of my students is saying they built a castle like Hogwarts. Yeah, you can totally recreate. I've had students recreate the National Mall with the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial. A lot of work. Some recreated the front of our school. Are there any uh, teachers out there that want to type in the chat? Um, just maybe something that your student, you know, that you saw as you're walking around the classroom, students building. Just out of curiosity, share with others. Looks like the teachers are very busy helping their students. Their students look very engaged, and that's kind of the the first thing we learn about Minecraft is it's very engaging, and it's not always just the lesson by itself. It's often something that's woven in with the lesson, right, or a culmination of the lesson. Uh, next month, Mr. Hawkins, we're doing uh, math, correct? Minecraft correct. math? Pull that and, up on our screen here shortly. <clears throat> and we have got some really cool examples that we've used in our classrooms of how we've used that. Uh, sometimes uh, we've used it for little short things and sometimes big projects. Uh, and of course, not every day. You wouldn't use a manipulative every single day, but, uh, but it is the icing on the cake for some students. Forgot to set my timer. Oh, it's okay. So, We've got about 11 minutes till the end of the session. So let's go with um, what? A, we've got to give our time some time to wrap up. So let's go six more minutes, students. So six more Perfect. minutes and then for you guys to build. Um, and then, you know, it's always hard to stop, but. <laughs> Yes, but the cool thing is you will be able, once we end the session, to share your creations with your classmates and your teacher. So that's always an important thing, right, when you're working on a project, is to be able to present it to other people, let them see the work, and be able to explain what you've created and why. Oh, that's true. Sarah's talking about... Uh, my students really like the animals that are in Minecraft. And when you learn what food they like and how to take care of them, it's really interesting. Uh, Susie, yes, I think she did say N-E-I-S-D. Correct. And it looks like Sarah says she even learned how to code in Minecraft, which is yeah. amazing. Sarah's really good. Yeah, Sarah's excellent at it. Coding is uh, embedded into Minecraft. We've got Hour of Code coming up in December. So I recommend to the teachers we're chatting with to go to code.org and to join in that. I think there's a Minecraft uh, pathway on there, isn't there, at, at Hour of Code? Yes, there is. Which is pretty fun. And then you can learn to code in Minecraft. In and fact, now it's embedded into, <laughs> the in like in the game, there's a button for, I think, Hour of Code right now. So Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, sweet. Yeah, last year I had students who who put the coding in and just like a building would go boop. <laughs> Did you do that? <laughs> we coded it. Whoops, I just sorry. love seeing all those engaged students. Yeah, I agree, Harmon. The coding is really fun. And coding, even though it sounds like something a foreign language, it actually helps uh, sequential thinking and it helps uh, neurons to connect in different ways. And it's kind of, I mean, we relate coding a lot to a sequence of events. 
So think about timelines, think about language arts, creating sequence of events and coding, same idea. Okay, students, we have a little bit over three minutes remaining um, before we have to kind of wrap things up. So um, continue getting close and be ready to share. That's excited to see what you guys actually built. I know. Do you think some of them with their cameras on could walk their devices up to the camera and show us? Possibly. That'd be kind of cool. See yes, I see a thumbs up from Ms. Martinez's <laughs> class. Awesome. That is one engaged class. Look at them. Oh, she's walking the computer to them. Whoa. She's going mobile. Uh, can we give Christy? Yeah, I'll try. Which one is it? Ms. Martinez. We want to get her off of mute. Seeing if I can. I got it. You got it? Awesome. Okay. She should be able to unmute now. Okay. Ms. Martinez, you can come off mute. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. They are actively building. What'd you build, Harper? You love camping. That's a great idea. Oh, oh wow. Cool. Yeah, Yay. Okay. You're making a heart. Can y'all see her heart there that she's working on? Oh, I heart her heart. <laughs> We've got some other people. Hudson, what you making? Um, Jesus on the cross. Oh, Jesus on the wow. cross. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Looking good. Show my, don't show my, don't. Okay. I won't come to yours <laughs> if you don't want me to show yours. <laughs> Do you want to share yours, yeah. Xavier? Yes. What do you got? I got the word memes because I like memes and a little smiley face. Oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Look at that. Memes and the word meme and a smiley face. I love memes. We like <laughs> memes, too. <laughs> who? Who? Okay. I made a control. Oh, nice. Wow, that looks that's awesome. awesome. I recognized it right away. That's perfect. Yeah. Great job, job, Elijah. Way to go, Elijah. What you making back here, Brooklyn? A log, because I like hedgehogs. Oh, because you like hedgehogs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Real Perfect. hedgehogs or Sonic the Hedgehog? Real hedgehogs. Real hedgehogs. Good job. They are cuter. They are cuter. Even better. <laughs> you want to share yours, Bennett? Yes. I made a Pokemon ball. Ooh, a Pokemon ball. Oh, yeah, that's that perfect. Awesome. The colors are exact. <laughs> Guys are so creative back here. Natalie, what are you working on? A soccer ball. Oh, uh, yeah. Cool. Oh, uh, look at that. You're, you're getting it. I can see that pattern starting. Wow. What you got, Nolan? A smiley face house. <laughs> I like your smiley face house. It's very happy. <laughs> okay, Miss Dunbar, I'm gonna pull up the creeper. Sounds good. Because students, we need you to come back to us really quickly. So if you push escape on that keyboard and just know that uh, it, it's not gonna disappear. Um, this world is now yours. Uh, you can go back into it at any time. Uh, just make sure you have permission from your teachers. Um, to, to do it, but um, we do want to just take a few minutes to uh, to wrap up and then give you guys an opportunity to share. So, uh, Ms. Dunbar, you want to take over from here? Sure. Why don't you click me up? So when we are done, you're going to get an opportunity to share with your friends at your table groups and you can share with your teacher. But don't forget that you're also going to be getting a digital certificate for today's session that will be sent to your teacher so your teacher can print it out and share it with you. But there's also what's a hard copy coming to your classroom also. So you'll be getting certificates for that. And we're very excited to share that with you because you were such a great 
uh, school of learners today. We, this is our first session like this, and I am so proud of every single classroom. I just saw so much work and so much engagement, and I'm really happy to see so much uh, cooperation and those mavens getting out there and helping each other. So don't forget that we do have some upcoming dates for uh, future sessions. Uh, December 14, we'll be working on Minecraft math, and I think the teachers are really going to enjoy that. Uh, January 18th, we'll be doing LA. That's not Los Angeles, even though I'm from California. That's language arts. Lots of ways to use Minecraft with literature, settings, uh, favorite scenes. February 22nd, science, of course. Lots of STEM in Minecraft. Uh, we haven't decided quite what in March, so TBA means to be announced. And April 12th, of course, we're going to get to coding because we're going to build up to that coding at the very end. If you need any uh, questions answered, uh, Randy's email and mine are there in the bottom right-hand corner. You can reach either of us for questions. And of course, uh, thank you to my mavens who were helping out in the chat. I appreciate that. And I think, Mr. Hawkins, that brings us to the close, does it? Yeah, so again, teachers, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come to you and you know share with you. Uh, amazing opportunity. Uh, students, thank you for being amazing as well. And, and, and make sure that you um, are, you know, take some time and uh, see what each other built. Uh, share, uh, teachers, you know, if you give them the opportunity to share, I know that seeing those uh, Ms. Martinez students share that mm -hmm. you can just see the excitement on their face. They're sharing yeah. their builds. So uh, this this is always, you know, a favorite of, of the students. So, um, you know, make sure you get that opportunity. But um, and please join us again. Um, you know, the one coming up soon in math is going to be another great one. So I look forward to and seeing you guys be. again. And so. teachers, we appreciate you for being on the call today and for showing bravery and courage and coming in here. Because I remember back in the day when I didn't know Minecraft and my students did. And you know what? It's okay. It's really cool to see teachers being taught by students. It's a great modeling example. We're all a great community of learners. So thank you for being with us today. We are really happy to have had you here. And we look forward to seeing you on December 14th. 14th, yeah. All right, perfect. All right, everybody, share with your groups.